Hello everyone, welcome back. At this point in the course, you're going to be one of two players. Either you have never heard of prophylaxis or you know what it is, but you have never used it to its full power. And that's exactly what this lesson is for. We're going to start with a few positions where you're going to see prophylaxis in its simplest form. So if you've never heard of it, this is going to be your opportunity to learn it. And if you have, it is going to be a good opportunity for you to test it and make sure that you understand it. But then guys, we're going to move on to this position that you have in front of you. Actually, I'm going to show you the entire game. This is a game played by Capablanca where he got to this position and you're going to see how he takes a position like this one, very ordinary, a little bit weird and he wins it without much difficulties because he understands the concept of prophylaxis. Before we go to those basic positions, guys, I want you to take a moment to think about what you would do if you were playing as the black pieces in a tournament game. What would be your plan and what would be your next move? Like always, I encourage you to, right now in the comments of this video, write down that move and that plan. I really wanna know where you are and it's going to help me guys plan future lessons. If you don't wanna write it down, at least think about it and really put in the time to evaluate the position and pretend like you were playing in a real tournament game. Before I take this away, we're gonna go back again to it, we're gonna see the whole game, but before we put it away, there's one more thing that I wanted to highlight. We know that if we have a position like this locked, we gotta look at the pawn structure. If you see this pawn structure, it is aiming at the queen side, so that means the black pieces should expand and attack there. And you should know by now what your target should be. So what is the target for the black pieces in this position? You should know it. If you don't, then I hope that after this lesson, you never forget it again. So we're gonna go back to it. We're gonna talk about it again. Let's first take a look at the simple positions. Okay guys, so in this position, it is the white pieces to move. We're not going to go too deep into it, but let me just tell you, every time I show this to any of my students, I ask them to evaluate the position and tell me their next move. Well, most people are going to tell me either castle, or rook c1 to put the queen on the same file as the queen. Well, the move is actually a move that is going to prevent your opponent's plan. So that's what prophylaxis is, it's one question. And I know you know this question, but we're going to take it to a different level. So basically the question is, what is my opponent trying to do? What is their plan? Can I prevent it? So it's basically anticipating your opponent's plans and finding a way to prevent it. So in this case, I know that my opponent has one minor piece that they haven't developed, and that is the knight. So the move is actually pawn to b5. After you do pawn to b5, you can go on and castle, put the rook on c1, but your opponent already is restricted, their game is not that comfortable, and more than anything, it has a great psychological impact in your opponent. And guys, this is really powerful. If you get into your opponent's head, many times you have the game won, even if the position is pretty even. So sometimes it's about finding that uncomfortable move for your opponent. Now here you're going to see prophylaxis in a more tactical context and basically it has to do with this pin. So there's a pin knight and we know we're supposed to add more pressure to it with the least valuable piece available. So I'm thinking already of rookie one to put more pressure, even queen e2, but if I try to think of my opponent's plan, and this is something that I mentioned before in another lesson, sometimes I'm playing in a tournament game and I stand up and I try to go around and look at the game from my opponent's perspective. Sometimes it just helps, it makes it easier to put yourself in your opponent's shoes. So here, what the black pieces need is knight f3. If they do something like knight f3, check, that gives them enough time to just move the queen out of trouble. Us, as the white pieces, need, we need to be prophylactic, we need to anticipate it, and the correct move is going to be king h1. Now, they don't have that anymore, and we're going to continue to put pressure on that knight. All right, guys, again, I'm not going to go too deep into this position. Now, let's go on to Capablanca's game. I chose this game because not only is it going to allow me to show you how Capablanca took this idea of prophylaxis to a whole new level, but it is going to allow me also to cover ideas that we have already stressed and reinforced, but other ideas that I know you guys haven't had too much exposure to. Anyways, Capablanca had the black pieces, the game went pawn to d4, knight f6, then knight f3, pawn to e6, pawn e3, and then pawn to b6. Guys, a very popular plan, we're trying to put the bishop on b7 and fight for the e4 square. You're gonna see how this is going to be the strategic uh, plan for, for the opening. So after b6, bishop d3, see, e4, 
bishop b7, putting pressure on e4, then castle, and right away Capablanca did knight e4. Then knight b to d2, putting pressure on e4, f5, putting pressure on e4, and now if the white pieces take with the knight, well, we take back with the pawn and we have a fork. If they take with the bishop, not only do we get their pair of bishops, but you guys should be familiar with this pawn over here. After they move, this pawn is going to give us more space on the king side, and we're going to attack like we saw in the king's indian attack, like we saw in those ideas of the Greek gift. So I know it's not the same, we looked at it from white's perspective, but you have to be able to identify these patterns, guys. So of course in this game, they did not take on e4, instead c3 happened, bishop e7, queen c2, look, adding more pressure to, to e4, d5, protecting e4. So how many moves have we done? We have done eight moves and it's all about e4. Now, those of you who have been following this course, you should have also identified the e5 square. With this pawn pushed and this pawn pushed, there's a hole in black's position. Now, it's not that bad because we have pieces that could uh, protect that square. So if this knight comes over, don't think he's going to be in a very good outpost, a weak square, because we have still pieces to, to take care of it. So knight e5 came anyways, then castle, and then finally, guys, the white pieces did f3 to kick us out of e4. So f3, knight takes on d2, bishop d2, and now we develop our, our last minor piece, challenging that knight from, from e5. So knight d7, queen takes on d7, and then after rook a to e1, we have c5, just expanding on the queen side, queen d1, rook f6, queen e2, rook a to f8, bishop b5, the queen moves to c7, and now after f4, Capablanca goes pawn to c4. Guys, automatically here, we have more space on the queen side, and like I said before, look at the pawn structure, it is aiming at the queen side, we need to expand there. Now, those of you who did what I asked you before and you thought about your next move, you thought about your plan, I'm pretty sure that you immediately thought of doing a6 and b5 and expanding on the queen side. This is our target. We know that our target is going to be the pawn in front of our most forward pawn. This is our most forward pawn. We got to target that pawn on, on c3. Now, the main thing that I want you to get from this lesson is the following. Many of us, when we get to a position like this and we see a clear plan, what we do is we quickly rush to execute it. We see our plan, we know our opponent's plan, and we're just trying to execute ours before they execute theirs. And it's just a race to see who gets it done faster. Well, in this game, you're going to see how Capablanca said, you know what, I know that I'm going to expand here. This is going to be excellent because I have the bishop to gain tempos on. So I'm going to get to b4 without them being able to do anything on the other side. But he's also asking himself, okay, while I'm doing this, what is my opponent going to be doing? Well, he's going to be doing something like g4 or probably something like rook over to attack on the king side. And if they're successful, then this expansion might have to wait if my king is being attacked. So what did he do? He said, let me be prophylactic and let me just try to pause that. Now, at this point, the white pieces did king h1 and we already know what this is for, guys. They want to do g4 to break on the king side. Either rook g1 to do g4 or rook f3 to do the rook lift and then roll over. So this is the plan for the white pieces. And after bishop d6, rook f3, Capablanca simply look for a way to be prophylactic and stop that. If we make sure that they never unleash this, uh, this expansion, we're going to be able to execute our plan on the queen side without having to worry about anything else. And at that point, the white pieces have no choice but to defend on this side without any counterplay on the other side. So after rook f3, the black pieces did pawn to h5. Remember, g4 is what they're trying to do. Well, Capablanca is trying to control that with the two pawns. Now, rook e to f1, bringing more pieces to the king side, and this is what Nimsovich used to call a mysterious rook move. This rook here is, it looks like it's doing nothing, but in reality, this rook is telling the other pieces, you know what, attack on the queen side, because I'm enough to hold everything on the king side. If they ever try to create something here, by taking, the rook is going to be open, hitting that king. So this is enough to keep this side under control. 
Now, bishop e1, bringing more forces to the king side, pawn to g6, bishop h4, king f7, and after queen e1, guys, I don't know about you, but if I were the black pieces here, I would feel very, very safe. Forget about g4, anything like rook g3 is not going to do much, so the king side is definitely under control. So now it is time to expand on the queen side. And again, this is extremely important. I also want you to see how these attacks are carried out. We have talked about pawn storms where the kings are to get to the king, but now you're going to see how it is done on the other side. So it's time to just do pawn to a6, bishop a4, and at the expense of the bishop, we were able to just get our pawn ready to break on b4. So after bishop d1, bishop c6, rook h3, this doesn't make much sense. There's nothing to do here. So the black pieces just continue with a5, getting ready to break on, on b4, bishop g5, the rook goes back, and then after queen h4, again, there's nothing for these pieces to do over here. There's no sacrifice, there's nothing they could do at all. So after queen h4, we finally break on b4, and now you're going to see the moment we make contact, they have to start defending on the queen side. So this queen is going back to e1, there's not much they could do, Rook b8, we need to bring our pieces to the queen side. This file might open, we might get past pawns and need the support of the rooks. So after rook h to f3, we have pawn to a4, and now you're going to see how he's going to create imbalances. He's going to find ways to create past pawns, open lines, and so on. So after pawn a4, rook 3 goes to f2, pawn to a3, and that's it. So guys, we do not want to... Uh, lock that side. We need our pieces to come in, we need to create ways to, to attack. So after a3, they did not take, guys, if they had taken, then we could just take on c3 and we got a protected pass pawn, our rook has um, an open file, this pawn is going to be captured at any point. So this has to be very comfortable for, for the black pieces. So for that reason they went b3, c takes b3, bishop b3, and now I really want you to pause the video to see if you can come up with the next move. Very simple, but logical move. So let's see if you guys can figure it out. Well, if you pause the video and you came up with the move bishop b5, congrats, because we want to take on c3, but we want our queen open to, to put pressure as well. So bishop b5, the rook moved, and now they took with the queen. So queen takes, pawn takes. Again, the pawn is passed very close to the end. And it's just a matter of time before the black pieces capitalize on that. So after b takes e3, we have rook c2. And now, guys, quick question for you. It's time to defend that pawn. How would you defend it? Well, this rook that is doing nothing over here, it served its purpose on, on the king side. So rook h to c8, then bishop h4 going back around, then bishop d3. The rook needs to move. And now, time to finish this game Capablanca style. Guys, pause the video and see if you can find the final combination. Well, this is the way I remember many of Capablanca's games. He just does all of this planning and the strategy, and then he finishes the position with a quick, simple tactic. And the move is, of course, rook takes b3, a takes b3, and then the pawn goes. So, take, take, a3. Guys, this bishop is going to be one blocking that rook and then promoting. Another very powerful idea, there's not much they could do. If they do something like rook a1, well, same thing. The rook is going to be locked in there when the pawn gets to c2. This is just the end of it. Anything else is not going to be enough for the white pieces to hold this position. This bishop could even come to a3 at some point. So, of course, the white pieces just resigned after pawn to a2. Again, guys, if you started this lesson without knowing anything about prophylaxis, you should know what it is by now. If you did know it, now this is the main idea, again, that I want you to take from this lesson. When you're playing your game, you know your plan. Try to, of course, understand your opponent's plans. And many of you already know this. But instead of just rushing to get yours done before they get theirs, try to think about ways of preventing their plan. Can I be prophylactic? If you can't, fine. But if you can, well, maybe that's the best way for you to continue. Now, before you go, I know that many of you thought of this already, but this is a great position for you to put it on the computer and try to finish it. We talked about this a few lessons ago. It is a great exercise to see if you could take a winning position and capitalize on it. Just play it against the computer. The computer is going to give you a hard time, but trust me, you're going to improve 
a lot. So like always, we're going to talk in the, in the comments. Let me know how it went if you put it versus the computer. If you get to use prophylaxis in any of the games, please let me know. It really helps a lot. So with that said, I'll see you guys in our next lesson.